This is Plant-Based Briefing, New Legal Fights to End Discrimination Against Vegans by Jordi Katzmajana at UnchainedTV.com. And I'm Marian Erickson, and this is the Curated Content Plant-Based Podcast, where I narrate articles on plant-based and vegan living with permission in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. And Unchained TV is one of the organizations I'm so grateful to have permission from to share their content. They're a nonprofit media organization reporting on animal rights news and crucial information ignored by advertiser-based mainstream media with videos, documentaries, cooking shows, all kinds of great information. So now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. New Legal Fights to End Discrimination Against Vegans by Jordi Katzmajana at UnchainedTV.com Legal fights to end discrimination against vegans have taken place all over the world with different degrees of success, and some are happening right now. As the number of vegans grows, so does the number of vegans who say they're experiencing discrimination in their workplace, in their schools, in hospitals and institutions, and even on public streets during protests. All over the world, vegans have been unfairly discriminated against for upholding a philosophy that could save the planet. However, a growing number of vegans who've experienced prejudice and discrimination have taken their fight to the courts. Their success could become a cultural game-changer. Unchained TV's Jane Velez Mitchell gathered a panel of experts on this issue. These experts are currently leading the fight for justice for those who insist on compassion in their choice of food, clothing, furniture, entertainment, and overall lifestyle. The Vegan Society's International Rights Network founder, Dr. Jeanette Rowley from the UK, plaintiff Astrid Provost from France, attorney Gerald Jerry Friedman from California, and attorney Tamara Bedick from New York, joined Jane for this fascinating conversation, which you can watch linked here. Fighting Discrimination Against Vegans in France Astrid Provost is an ethical vegan and aspiring dietitian. She battled bulimia for several years until veganism gave her the strength to create food boundaries and achieve food sobriety. In respecting other animals, she found self-respect. Those boundaries are now being tested by a cooking class that demands she use animal products or risk failing. Courageously, Provost initiated a lawsuit in France alleging discrimination, the first of its kind in that country. She explains more. In the program, for the official French degree, there's a cooking class, and for this cooking class, I asked for a special arrangement. I asked to cook without animal products, and I was ready to make the same recipes as everybody else. I was denied being allowed to cook vegan recipes, so that's why I brought my case to court, especially because it put me under a huge amount of stress. In August 2023, Provost sued the French education system, and the case, which can take up to 14 months, is still pending. However, she is optimistic. I think there's a good chance I can win. We reviewed what my lawyer brought to the justice system, and I think it worked really well. Vegan rights are animal rights because if we are prevented from eating vegan, if we're prevented from cooking vegan, it's the animals who suffer in the end. A breakthrough case in the UK. Across the channel from France, a previous case brought to the UK Employment Tribunal in 2018 ended up being a huge success, establishing greater protections for all vegans in the United Kingdom. I happened to be the person who filed this case after I was fired because I was an ethical vegan concerned about where the pension provided by my former employer was invested. I presented more than 1,200 pages of evidence, and in 2020, a judge ruled that ethical veganism is a protected philosophical belief under the UK's Equality Act of 2010. Tamara Bedick is an employment rights attorney from New York, a past president of the New York City chapter of the National Lawyers Guild, and currently the chair of its Animal Rights Committee, she said this about my case. It's a wonderful victory, and it happened about three years ago now. Jordi Katzmajana and his solicitor Peter Daly are well known for this and loved for this. They really received incredible media attention when this finally came out in 2020, and the decision really echoed throughout Great Britain, and lots of different corporations sat up and took notice and indeed changed the way they cater. So in the UK, this fight was won. In the continent of Europe, not yet, but there is hope. And in the US, not yet, but we continue the struggle here too. Bedick also talked about a legal case that is currently being tried in Ontario, Canada, about a vegan firefighter who was not given adequate food, and another ongoing case in Switzerland. The gentleman in Geneva, Switzerland, who is taking his case to the European Court of Human Rights, he was also ridiculed while in detention for 11 months because there was nothing that he could eat besides bread. So I think we're in the early chapters of this fight. 
We really must win. It's not just about individual victories for individual vegans. It's not even about a victory in court that will help your vegan friends as well. It's also about saving the planet. The European Union could soon follow suit. Dr. Jeanette Rowley holds a PhD in veganism and human rights and has published widely on the subject of legal protection for vegans. She founded and chaired the Vegan Society's International Rights Network in the UK. In 2022, she and Dr. Carlo Prisco edited the first textbook on this issue, Law and Veganism, International Perspectives on the Human Right to Freedom of Conscience. She explains the role of the European Human Rights Convention regarding the belief on veganism. It's a very serious issue, and the reason for this gets down to the human right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. That's a long title, but it's commonly reduced to freedom of belief or freedom of conscience. And freedom of conscience is one of our most important human rights. The Human Rights Committee has already stated that the right to freedom of conscience is far-reaching and profound. It includes new beliefs, emerging beliefs, and certainly it includes beliefs with a dietary element. So given the fact that it's one of our most important human rights and states have a duty to make sure we have access to our rights— then anybody who works for a state body shouldn't be denied food that aligns with their ethical convictions. It's absolutely about policy change and keeping the animals front and center. That's what matters. If we can bring about widespread policy changes by bringing these cases, then we should do it. Fighting Discrimination Against Vegans in the USA Gerald Jerry Friedman is an ethical vegan, an animal rights activist, and a California attorney. He is the founder of the animal law practitioner, Listserv, that helps animal attorneys from across the USA collaborate and is a longtime member of the National Lawyers Guild. He was involved in one of the first attempts to make veganism a protected class. In the late 1990s, before he was a lawyer, he was offered a job. But once he refused to take the MMR vaccine because of his ethical veganism beliefs, that offer was rescinded. Jerry sued, essentially claiming that his beliefs were a creed akin to a religion. Unfortunately, he was not successful in the first stages, and the case has not progressed since. He believes he should have won, as there was already a good precedent for his case involving two atheists. He explains, Two soldiers in Vietnam wanted to be medics instead of soldiers. The U.S. Army resisted, and that went up to the Supreme Court. Then the Supreme Court said that essentially their atheism does not disqualify them from religious protection— so we would need a case similar to that. It seems that at least in the U.S., to make veganism a protected class, vegans who experience discrimination must take legal action and then perhaps lose at the lower court levels and then appeal. Although this seems counterintuitive, Friedman explains why it could work. The way that these laws are established in the courts is that there has to be a constant battle going up to the Supreme Court, so somebody has to lose at the trial level, somebody has to appeal, somebody has to appeal again to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court has to hear the case. So until that case comes about, we'll keep having these skirmishes in the lower courts. Hopefully someday the Supreme Court will recognize we're not in a theocracy. There is not one definition of religion, but rather that the creed of veganism is worth protecting as a protected class. This is a movement of conscience. This is a movement of nonviolence. This is a movement to let non-human animals live the lives that they want. You just listened to New Legal Fights to End Discrimination Against Vegans by Jordi Katzmajana at UnchainedTV.com. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson, and Jordi is amazing. He is a trailblazer with his court case in the UK, ending up with ethical veganism being a protected philosophical belief. And these other people in the article, too. And if you get a chance, I always link to the original post in the show notes. And there's a link to the video where Jane Velez Mitchell is interviewing this panel. And they talk about so many cases of discrimination. It's shocking. One I do remember hearing about was the Canadian firefighter who was fighting wildfires and had no food to eat because there was nothing vegan for him. It's not just a, oh, I'd rather have waffles than pancakes. It's, I will not eat others. It's just wrong. And they showed one of the headlines in the news about this, and it says, Firefighter says human rights were violated over lack of vegan food at a blaze. And they talk about just how headlines like that are just poking fun at the issue, not even taking it seriously. So if you want to check out that video and can't find the link to the show notes, maybe because you watch on YouTube, go to plantbasedbriefing.com and look up this episode and you'll see the link in there. So please share this episode with anyone who might benefit and thanks for listening.